Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're going to look at how does a computer on a desk, so you may be working in a building, you've got computers set up around the office space and they're connected into the network and they will run into something like what is behind me, a comms cabinet, a server cabinet, and you essentially want to know how does that actually work? How is it all connected together? Where do all the parts fit in? So let's go through a lot of that right now. Here we got just our standard computer. Nothing special, but of course the side of my computer has a network point. The computer itself could also be plugged into a dock, which has a network point which runs into that, and then that is gonna run out into a particular cabinet. So here we got just a standard network cable. This is what's called a ethernet cable. This is an RJ45 connector, and this is a CAT6 cable. They also will come in CAT5, CAT5E, and various uh, combinations. So this essentially is the cable, an ethernet cable that's gonna run into your computer, into the side of your computer, or into the side of your phone, and then that will connect into a particular port that is situated near the computer itself. So here is an example of those wall points. This is on a actual wall itself. So you'll see that some were underneath, some could be on the top, and then you've got a couple of ethernet points with an actual uh, reference number here, which will match up to the reference number on the patch panel. But essentially you can see that out of the back of the computer, we've got a blue cable running into a particular port with a particular number for reference. And my phone runs into a different port next to that one with a particular reference as well so that I can track essentially where that's going. So that is then going to run up the wall, which we'll see now, and that, that runs into our server, into our rack cabinet itself. And that is being fed all into this one symbol, you know, chain of cables that are running up into the roof. And then if I lifted up that roof panel at the top, you'll see that the cables all run all the way into our server and comms cabinet, which then are fed into a patch panel into a switch. If a computer doesn't require a ethernet cable running into it, you may be wondering how does that work? Well, this is a wireless access point. It's called a WAP wireless access point. This is a Fortinet uh, wireless access point. And essentially this on its own will have a ethernet cable running into it. So one of those same blue cables that you saw that is connected into a computer directly is running into the bottom, into the back of one of these devices. And then likewise going up to the roof into a patch panel that is in my comms cabinet. So regardless of whether you are physically plugged in via a cable or using the Wi-Fi, there is still some physical connection that needs to be running into your comms cabinet. And then they're all essentially coming into a centralized location or multiple centralized locations across your building. So in this case, we've got a whole bunch of purple uh, you know, CAT6 cables. These are ethernet cables that are running from each individual port uh, on each individual desk, running down into this particular cabinet. Then each of those will then correlate to a particular patch panel. So these are the back of the patch panels. You'll see that each cable that comes down from the roof runs into an actual port in the back of a patch panel. This cable is then spliced open to reveal each of the eight sets of um, cables that are within each CAT6 or CAT5 cable, and they are then connected into the back of this patch panel. So you'll see in this case, there is a number of different cables running into a range of different patch panels. These patch panels could be configured uh, to have just a uh, voice, for example, for your VoIP phones, for your you know, telephony, or they could be running from your computers, from the actual phone ports uh, and from the computer ports themselves and could be split up separately. So for example, this one could be just for computers, this one could be just for phones, this one could be for, you know, for servers or network switches, etc. So depending on the size of the organization, some cables may be going to different areas, they're gonna be spliced differently. And then obviously once they go up into the roof, they're gonna go into the different sections across the building and across the different services. So here we got the front of the patch panel. So you'll see that from, from behind, we obviously had the purple cables. You can sort of see the purple cables just through the back there. And they are now running into the front. So obviously we've got the, the purple cables on the back that have been spliced open. And now I've got the front end ethernet port, which essentially is the other end of the ethernet port available here where I can now plug in further cables. And you'll see that each single one of these patch, essentially each port on the patch panel is labeled. 
and at the desk themselves where I've got the physical ports for my phone and for my data, I've got an actual ID number, an actual number that lets me know that this port is running into this particular um, port on my desk. So it, easily, it makes it easy to track exactly where the cables are going. If this was not labeled, then I would have no clear visibility of where this port physically goes unless I have some sort of a network diagram or a network matrix or map that sort of dictates where that data is actually going, where the cables are actually going. A computer or a phone that is plugged into a port comes in through that back purple port and then will run into a port on the front here. And that is then dictated by the cables which are running into these, which are essentially another Cat5 or Cat6 cable which will run into a switch. So here is essentially what we're looking at. We've got an empty ethernet port that at the moment is physically connected into this location right here. So on the other end of this, if this is not um, connected into a switch, then I can plug in a computer into this particular port, wherever that may be in my building, and it's not going to really do anything because if you trace that cable from one point to another, it's gonna to come to here, and because this port does not go anywhere, does not go into a switch, it's not gonna get a network, a network IP address. So what you need to do is you need to get a cable, run it into there, and then run it into a subsequent switch. In the case of what we've got here, because we've got two cabinets that are essentially right next to each other, so this particular cabinet is gonna house my patch panels, and the cabinet next to it is going to house my switches, which is essentially where all of these ports are going to be running into, into a switch, and then the switch will connect to a number of backend services, which will provide a relevant IP address and connectivity into the network for a device that is connected into either of these ports. So on the other end, this is the cabinet right next door. You'll see that all the cables are now running into these switches. These are Cisco switches, the 10 gigabit switches, and you'll see that all of my blue cables, which are all my data cables, are running right into this particular switch, which then connects to a number of services to get me into the network, essentially network connectivity. You see that the switch right underneath it is housing and you know servicing all of my yellow cables, which are all of my phone. So this switch is essentially dedicated for phone, and this switch is essentially dedicated for data. Now what you'll notice is on a switch, I've got some LEDs, some indicator lights, to let me know if there is activity on this particular network point. In this case, you'll see that this cable here is flashing. That means that if I trace this cable, this cable is gonna go all the way into a patch panel in the other cabinet, up the roof, over the roof, to the particular port which correlates to this, and plugged into a particular computer that is currently on the network. So this is indicating there is network activity, network traffic through this particular port. So once your computer is connected into the network and it's running into all of our infrastructure here, it's running into a patch panel, it's running into a switch, it's then gonna be connected to some services in the back end, which is going to be giving it an IP address and connected into the network. Now we're not gonna go into detail of the functionality or the um, how that actually works, but in short, it's going to go and query what's called a DHCP server, which is essentially a server that is spitting out IP addresses out on the network. Your computer's gonna say, I need an IP address. It's gonna say, where is there a DHCP server? The DHCP server, server will say, here I am. It'll give it an IP address. That IP address will be given to that computer. So then now that computer can access the network. It will be able to go through a different number of different ways to get to the network. It could be traversing via firewalls, via switches, via routers, over different IP ranges, over different subnets, over a number of different sorts of technologies, security procedures to make sure that the computer is valid and is acceptable into the network. It will go via services like DNS to be able to get you know, authentication uh, to a domain controller, which will give it authentication into a network via a username and password. That is, I'm sure, a lot of information. If you've never heard of a lot of that, those terms before, I've got a whole bunch of other videos that do talk about a lot of those things. But that, in short, is what is gonna be happening on the back end once you physically plug a computer into the network to be able to get access onto the internet, onto the network. Either way, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new. I would love it if you commented. Commenting lets me know that you are finding this information and this content helpful. And also let me know if you want me to record anything in particular or you want knowledge on a particular area. Either way, subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, and like this video as well. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, have a good day and we'll see you next time.